the Homeowners Association for inviting me. It's such an honor and I've had so much fun over the last uh, day and a half here. Uh, and I hope to learn more about the Packards from you people. Uh, Lakewood has a different story and then we have in, in Warren. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to uh, you after the presentation. Uh, we do have a lot to cover. It's kind of a timeline for uh, the Packard history. And uh, so let us begin. I'm going to step off to the side here so I won't block anybody's view if it works. You want okay, Mary, we dim the lights. Maybe a little more. Can everybody see the screen? Uh, whoop, already we had a problem. <laughs> the, the first slide. We're talking about the Packard brothers, but you really can't talk about the Packard brothers unless you know about their family. James Ward Packard, uh, he was the creative, inventive brother. His older brother, William Dowd Packard, uh, was the business-minded uh, Packard. And you'll see through this presentation how each one had a special uh, uh, role. This is Warren Packard, their father, and he was quite the entrepreneur. And he was a, um, came to Warren at the age of about 17 years old, uh, worked in an uncle's hardware store, and he learned the hardware business. And one of the stories I like to tell about Mr. Pa uh, Mr. Packard is that Every Saturday, he was to take a team of horses over to Niles from Warren. That's about a nine-mile trip. And uh, buy iron products for the hardware store. Instead of seeing this as an interruption on his weekend, he saw this as an opportunity. And that's what Mr. Packard was very good at, seeing opportunities. He would go around all week long and collect scrap iron. And he put that in the trailer, and he would take that over to uh, or the, the, the uh, buggy, and he'd take that over to the... Uh, iron mill and he'd sell the scrap iron and that money he'd go in this pocket, he'd take care of business out of the other pocket and buy the products for the hardware store and he did this every weekend and by the time he was 21 years old he had enough money accumulated to buy a partnership in that business. Now so I'm mentioning him being an entrepreneur, he worked in hard, he had a hardware store, stores actually, uh, lumber and saw mills. He had 13 of them from Warren all the way up through uh, uh, up here in Lake Chicago area. Uh, he had a hotels and he had iron and rolling mills and he was being very, very success successful in his early life. However, his personal life was not as uh, fortunate. He was married to a Sylvia Camp and on September 1st, 1852, they had two sons. And the first son died, his name was Rolla, and he died in 1855 at the age of only 10 months. The second son was Harry, he was born in the fall of 1856, and his mother died just a few weeks uh, later, on December 4th, 1856. She was only 23 years old. Harry died in December 1858, two months after his second birthday. As you can see, we often say, oh, I wish I was in their shoes. But maybe you have to think about that before you uh, uh, step forward. Mr. Packard remarried on November 20th, 1860. He married Elizabeth Dowd Packard. And here she is sitting, this is about the only picture I've seen of her, and she's sitting there with her son, uh, W.D. Packard. They had two boys, William Dowd Packard and uh, James Ward Packard. And then they had three daughters. The first daughter was named Alaska. The second daughter was named Carlotta. And 14 years later, they had Olive Packard. At this location, now people in Warren would know what they're looking at here. It's a corner of uh, East Market Street and Elm Road. And it's right across from what is called the Sunrise uh, Inn. And it's a, a kind of a gathering place. And everybody in Warren goes there for pizza. And uh, 
at the corner across the street is where the Packards built their first home in 1860. This is the courthouse square, uh, and uh, they built their second home just to the right on this side over here uh, on Park Avenue. And that's where the two daughters were born. The two sons were born at the, at the earlier house. And this uh, courthouse, it burned down in 1895. This is what our courthouse square would have looked like in 1895. This is right behind the courthouse on high, uh, high Street. And this is their final mansion, or the mansion in Warren, Ohio, for the uh, Packard's uh, mother and father. And this was a very, very beautiful home. In 1874, now I mentioned 1872, they built the mansion. 1874, and I believe because they had the sawmills up here, they saw the area and fell in love with the Chautauqua area. They bought this hotel, and it was owned by another uh, individual, and then they bought it and added on to it, and it became a, a grand hotel. It's called the Lakeview House. And I'm sure many of you may have heard and maybe have pictures uh, of that also. The boys learned from their father. And I say that because he had them working from a very early age. W.D. learned how to keep, do the bookkeeping, and he not only kept the books for the hardware store, he also kept the books for the hotel. He kept the books for the, uh, uh, the hardware, or the hardware, but the sawmills. Uh, he was quite a busy uh, young man. James Ward, he learned all about all the tools. And I mentioned he was the mechanical creative brother. And he had, he worked in a hardware store, and he knew all the tools and how to work, how to use them. Uh, later they sold uh, newspapers. They also printed and sold ads, and I have to explain what that's about. They had a toy, a cast iron printer. And they could run off actually a single sheet and make a little ad up. And so they made an ad and they stuffed that in the newspapers that they were selling. It wasn't long when people in town realized, gee, I could get an ad from the Packard Brothers cheaper than going to the newspaper. It was going to the same people. So <laughs> they, they, had a, they had quite a nice business going for a, a little while. <laughs> I think probably the newspaper uh, complained about it. Uh, both James Ford and W.D., uh, they worked as bellhops in the hotel. Uh, their father owned it. That didn't mean that they just could go there and, and lay down and enjoy themselves. Uh, they also sold, and this book here is the cover of a uh, Columbia bicycle uh, catalog. And WD would order these bikes, mail order, and James Ward would put them together and um, make bicycles for uh, their uh, their customers. So as you as you can see, they were always very busy as young kids. Okay, education. Uh, all of the Packers graduated from uh, Warren, High, uh, Warren City Public Schools. W.D. Packard uh, went to Ohio State and studied uh, business. Now, I don't tell the students when I'm giving a, a tour at the museum, but W.D. only went one year, and he found out he knew more than what the teacher did because of all of his experience in business with his father's uh, businesses. Now, James Ward Packard, he graduated from Lehigh University with a degree in engineering. After graduating from college, both of the Packard brothers, W.D. and James Ward, uh, went to New York City and worked at a company called Sawyer Mann. Now, this is what that building would have looked like at that time, and it later became Westinghouse. Well, they worked there for six years, and they climbed, they climbed the business organizational chart and were doing quite well there. But they knew what it was like to own your own business because of their father, and they thought to themselves, let's go back to Warren and start our own electric company. Now, in Warren, uh, W.D. had talked, uh, because of his business with Sawyer Man, talked the uh, Warren Power Company to build a general electrical generator in Warren right on the Mahoney River. This is just a, a block or so away from the Packard Mansion. 
and uh, this was built in 1890, and that was the same year that Packard started their Packard Electric uh, Company in 1890. At first, they called it the Packard Electric Company, and they were selling stocks, and they thought for sure a lot of the people would buy the stock, primarily because the uh, the name Packard was such a, a good, solid business name that he, they felt that the, uh, the Packard uh, name would uh, attract a lot of business, a lot of people to buy stocks. However, it didn't work out that way. So W.D., who was, like I say, a business uh, genius, he hired or, or talked uh, an associate that he knew in New York City, a man by the name of J.W. Peel, and they made him president of the electric company. They changed the name from Packard Electric uh, to New York and Ohio Company, Packard Incandescent Lamps and Transformers. And now the stock sold readily. Uh, it was a, uh, it saved, saved the business and got it going. Packard's uh, sister, the oldest sister, uh, Alaska, uh, she became the plant superintendent, and that was unheard of back in the 1890s because uh, women just really weren't in the, the workplace, as certainly as management. Packard, he was small in stature, and he could put the filaments in the light bulbs himself. But he, he hired men, and they, their hands were so big, they had difficulty uh, assembling these lamps. Then they realized that women with their sewing skills probably were more adept and could do this better. And they ended up hiring over 100 women, and Alaska was their supervisor. Uh, in 19, uh, I guess it was 1990, uh, in Packard and Warren, they interviewed one of uh, Mrs. Packard, Alaska Packard's employees. And she was in her 90s, and she said it was a pleasure to work there. They worked very hard, but if a machine would break down, W.D. Packard and James Ward Packard would run over jump in and fix this machine and they was, of course they were wearing suits at the time and by the time they were done the suit was covered with oil and uh, but they they felt that the Packard brothers were, were willing to work like that they would too and uh, they enjoyed the best part of the day was walking to work and Alaska would meet them halfway there and walk to work with them and they had the best time and then when they got to work it was work uh, as uh, as should be here it shows the ladies uh, assembling the, the lamps. They, at one point, they used uh, bamboo for filaments, and they would split bamboo. William Dow Packard married Annie uh, Hadley Storer Store on July 11, 1891. Uh, they were only married a, uh, for four years when Annie had, a, uh, had complications with an appendicitis, and she passed away on June 28, 1895. William and Annie had a son, and it, the son was named Warren Packard II, named after uh, his grandfather, W.D.'s grandfather. Uh, he was born on October 5th, 1892. He married a woman by the name of Jane Braden. And they had a son, and their son was named Warren Packard the third, and I, I had the pleasure of meeting him, who was only two years old when his father was killed in an airplane crash. So Warren Packard III never really knew his, uh, his father, but he was raised by his aunts, uh, the Packard sisters. 1895, notice we're time moving very fast here. Uh, this is the uh, location where the Packard second home was. And uh, they moved then to the mansion, and that's where the two uh, uh, out, uh, Alaska and Carlotta were born. And they tore that building down and built the uh, Packard Block building. And right about up here, you can, that's where the title, it says Packard Block. But uh, that became his office. But before he really got established in his office, the courthouse burned down in 1890, uh, 1895. I showed you the, the wooden courthouse earlier. Uh, so they held Packard's offer to use his office as the Trumbull County Courthouse. 
So uh, for the first uh, two years while they were building the new courthouse, uh, Packer's office was the Trumbull County uh, Courthouse. At the same time, uh, Packers would come up to uh, Lake Chautauqua and they had summer cottages here. And this is Mr. Packard on his launch, the Carlotta. He named it after his uh, sister out here on Lake Chautauqua. Here's Olive and Carlotta on the lake and it uh, looks like they're enjoying themselves. Now this picture here is W.D. Packard with his sister of Olive, Carlotta in Alaska. And this is Sierra. 1897. And the reason I say I'm identifying it at that time, this building here in the background is the new courthouse being built. And there's a lot of these signs across here that they, they have the construction area blocked off. And of course, back then they used that space as advertising space on the sign here that says racket store. And people in Warren would know the, the racket store. Uh, this is, they would be right in front of their Packard Mansion where they're standing here. Just looking out across from the Packard Mansion, there was a Civil War monument. James Ward took this photograph and he took it of a 19 or 1897 Winton automobile. And uh, it's going around giving a demonstration. James Ward was so fascinated by the car, uh, he, he bought one in 1898. And this looks like what he, it's very similar to the car that he bought. Uh, you've, we've all heard the stories possibly that James Ward was, uh, after he got home with his car, he had a lot of problems with it. And he, being an engineer, tore the car all apart to see how he could improve on it. And uh, went back to Mr. Winton and uh, told Mr. Winton, you know, if you did this, this, and this, you'd have a darn good car. Well, and, and Mr. Witten felt he already had a darn good car and told Mr. Packard, why don't you build your own if you can build a better one? <laughs> <laughs> this man here, his name is George Weiss. George Weiss was a good friend of Mr. Packard, and George Weiss had a Witten actually before Mr. Packard did. In fact, he bought Witten stock and uh, was uh, quite pleased with it. And then when Mr. Packard was having problems with his car, he overheard the suggestions or knew what the suggestions were due to uh, conversations W.D. had uh, or James Warden had with him. And he thought those suggestions, unlike Mr. Witten, made a lot of sense. And he said to the Packards, he wrote them a letter saying that if you guys build a car uh, and I like what I see, I would invest money in your automobile. This is downtown Warren as it would have looked in 1897. On November 7, 1897, they brought out the first, uh, this is their first car. George Weiss is standing here, and he hired a photographer to take some pictures of the car. The uh, James Ward is sitting in the car. W.D. is in the gray suit. The first employee here, his name is William Hatcher, and every time Mr. Packard had a problem with his Witten, Mr. Witten would send William Hatcher down to fix it. Well. Packard realized this was the best mechanic uh, that Witten had, and he made him an offer he couldn't refuse, and, and so he came to work for the Packards. Uh, the man here in the uh, end here, him and his wife, uh, his name is George Blackmore, and he started the first Packard dealership. You can see a little better view of those people. Oh, by the way, there's a dog tied here. That's my dog. Uh, I, I painted the picture, so I thought I could put my dog. <laughs> However, Mr. Packard did have a dog. Our, our dog was a, a Sheltie, a miniature collie. This, Mr. Packard had a, uh, a border collie, and it got its paw caught in the chain. And uh, Mr. Packard was very disappointed because the dog got hurt quite seriously. And he threw a tarp over the car and says, that's it. I'm not going to build a car that's going to hurt my dog. And uh, but as the dog got back to its old playful self, they took the tarp off and uh, <laughs> proceeded with building the car. The old saying, going to the dogs, probably would apply here more. Uh, I want to uh, give special thanks to uh, Terry Martin here. He was the one who actually restored this car here. Uh, and wrote a book uh, about the uh, 
Packard family and the Packard uh, Automobile Company. Uh, here in the center is uh, Warren Packard III, and he was very active with our museum getting it started. And the man on the side here, on the left, is, uh, excuse me, on the right, is uh, Roger White, and his grandfather was George Weiss. They changed the Americanized uh, Weiss to White uh, in later years. Uh, this is a photograph that uh, Mr. Uh, Weiss had uh, taken at that time, and that was on November 7th, 1899. There are other pictures of number one, but when it has the light on it, you know that it was taken on the day that they had it, uh, introduced it. The light, if you go to crank the car, and there's a hole here, and you crank it around, the light gets in the way of the, the crank, so the lights were only on the car one day. <laughs> they took the lights off, but it was all dressed up for the car show, you know. <laughs> this is the plant that the, the package wanted to build in Warren. It's called the Ohio Automobile Plant. Again, uh, the, uh, you had bought the very first car, you had bought it from the Weiss Packard Association. Then it became the, uh, the Ohio Automobile Company. And I believe 19, uh, 18, uh, or, or 1902, it then became the Packard Motor Car Company. This is a couple of pictures of the cars that they were building. Notice 1900, they had a Model C that had a steering wheel. Packard was the first company to have a, uh, a first American company to have a steering wheel. This is one of their first ads, and they, uh, it was called the Horseless Age uh, magazine. And here's a picture of five Packard's different models. I contend when they made a new car, they had a new model. But the last two models over here, they have steering wheels. The first three have tillers. They ad advertised and promoted their cars in the uh, Madison Square Garden Auto Show in 1901. Here they are demonstrating a 1902 Packard in New York. George Weiss was quite the salesman. And, and this is George sitting uh, back here in the car. A man by the name of Henry <coughs> Born Joy. And uh, he was a wealthy uh, businessman from Detroit. And he bought a Packard, and he loved it so well that he decided that he would buy the company. Well, Packard wouldn't sell him the company, but they would sell him stock in the company. And uh, Henry, like I say, Henry Joy was very wealthy. His <coughs> father owned the railroads. Mr. Packard <coughs> made quite a bit of money making railroad ties. There's always someone with more money than, than you have. Uh, 1902, uh, Warren Packard, or James Warren Packard, uh, he built the first uh, modern apartment house in Warren. Unfortunately, they're in the process of tearing this building down. Now, this is how it looks today. Uh, you, you can't really see the, the, uh, the beauty of it, but it really was quite a, uh, uh, a fantastic uh, apartment house. And many of the very wealthy uh, citizens ended up uh, uh, living there. 1902, they had, this is the, the plant in Warren uh, of making like the Model F. And uh, the men would move from station to station rather than the car. <laughs> this is the 1903 Old Pacific, uh, and this made the transcontinental trip uh, across the uh, country in 62 days. And of course, coming across the country, starting in California, going to New York, there weren't any roads. So they just kind of plowed their way through. And there were places where they had to lay a tarp down in front of the car so it wouldn't sink into the, the sand. And then they picked the tarp up and put it ahead of it again and drive over it and pick the you know, this leapfrog effect. The average speed during that section of the uh, trip was uh, two and a half miles per hour. You could walk it uh, faster if you left the car behind. In 1903 also, they built a four-cylinder engine, and to test that engine, they made a, uh, a race car. And that was the first American car to go over 60 mile an hour. And that was really quite a feat, because everybody knew that your blood would boil if you would go that fast. <laughs> he got away with it. He got away with that. In 1903, end of 1903, uh, they moved to Detroit. Henry Joy, uh, a lot of the wealthy uh, businessmen that Henry Joy knew, bought Packard stock, 
And uh, when it came time to build the plant, the stockholders voted to move uh, to Detroit. This isn't something that Mr. Packard really wanted to do. This is the Packard Mansion again. And, oh, I forgot to mention that while on, on November 3rd, uh, I'll go back to that slide, right? On November, uh, October uh, 10th, 1903, uh, when the company went up to Detroit, James Ward and W.D. were up there for a business meeting the weekend before. And uh, they got word that their mother had passed away in, uh, back in Ward, and they left the meeting and came back to, uh, uh, to Ward to be uh, with their, the family. There's a lot of stories. They said, well, then that's when they all went, the Henry Joy, well, since the Packers weren't there, they kind of did their thing and let the Packers out of the planning. <laughs> that's not really true. The Packers were involved in the planning. They knew that this was, the move was going to happen. It wasn't what they wanted, but they knew that this was uh, something that uh, was going to ta uh, take place. Uh, since the home now is empty, uh, Mrs. Packer was active with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Warren Suffrage uh, Act, uh, uh, Association, if you will. And she made her home, it was the national headquarters <coughs> for the Women's Suffrage uh, Association. And uh, here, after that was over and was successful, the Packard home became a music store. And then we can see the Packard, this is inside the Packard home as a, as a music store, it was Hall's music store. And you can see the pianos here, and this would have been one of their uh, sitting rooms. Uh, this is a later picture, and just before, this is the Packard uh, home. It has a long porch on it now. It became the Elks Club after the music store moved out. And the reason for it becoming an Elks Club is that Warren Packard was a longtime member of the Elks Club, and he wished that to, uh, to happen. Uh, they took the porch that they had on the front and added a bigger porch. And this is like 1960, uh, and the building next to it is the YMCA. In 1960, they tore this house down and added a, another building there. Called, uh, that's the swimming pool part of the YMCA. But this is the last picture I could find uh, of the, uh, the Packard house still standing. Now, uh, that was 1903. 1904 they, was the first production car that came out in uh, Detroit, and they produced the Model L. And what was unusual about it is that it was now, instead of being a one-cylinder engine, it is now that four-cylinder engine that they used in the race car and all their cars uh, were, were four cylinders. And notice now it has a front end on it. Cars didn't look like buggies anymore. Uh, they had, this is where the, the engine would have been. J.W. and uh, his wife, uh, Elizabeth Gilmer Packard, Gilmer Packard, uh, during their honeymoon to Lake Chautauqua in their brand new 1904 Model L. And, uh, At the same time, in 1906, W.D. built a home in Warren called Riverport along the uh, Mahoney River. And that was for his new wife, Carolyn Bruder uh, Packard. 1907, I only show this for one reason. Notice the grill on the front of the car. That stylized grill became a uh, kind of a trademark of the Packard cars uh, in later years. This is the home where W.D., uh, Jane Ward Packard, excuse me, uh, they bought, uh, purchased this Abel, Abel Homestead. It's on Park Avenue. It's only about two blocks up from the apartment house that they made, and that's where the, uh, Jane Ward, Ward was uh, uh, staying when they first got married. Then they moved up to their own home, and uh, this is on, uh, it's now called the Buckeye Club. And that this is what it looks like today, and I think it looked very much like that uh, when the Packers were there. 1910, the cars, uh, this is what the cars would look like and what it looked like at that time. This is a picture up here at Lake Chautauqua from the, um, uh, from the river, or the lakeside, looking at the, I believe this is the Packard boathouse. And these are some of the cottages that were along the, the shorelines. 
Uh, you may have seen these, this picture before. I just saw this for the first time the day before yesterday. And I uh, was excited about getting it. This is one of the cottages that, that were moved from the shoreline to make room for the Packard Mansion. And the people here are a group from uh, the Packard Museum. We took a bus trip up here and we were being shown around. And I believe the next picture here is another one of the cottages that was uh, moved uh, to uh, make room for uh, the, uh, the, the mansion uh, on the front work. So they had the beautiful view. And of course, 1912, uh, this is the uh, Warren Packard, uh, Warren Packard's home, uh, the mansion there. This is a picture, and I say pretty as a postcard because I, it was a postcard that I scanned. <laughs> and it's of Mrs. Packard's garden here in, in Lakewood, New York. It's beautiful. And here's Mrs. Packard uh, in her rose garden uh, here in Lakewood. And uh, you can see how much she really did enjoy that. Again, our, our tour is coming through here. And at the time when we were here, oh, this must have been eight years ago, uh, Miss Mary Blair was uh, our tour guide, and it was such a pleasure to meet her for that, uh, that trip. To give you an idea of what was happening, 1913, this is year after the, the mansion was built, the Packers were really changing technology. Uh, it has a, uh, a six-cylinder engine in it now. They started off with a one, now they're at the four and the six. And uh, this has a steering wheel on the, oh, I went the wrong, wrong button, excuse me. The, uh, it has a, a steering wheel on the left-hand side. It has electric, uh, electric lights. It has uh, key start. Uh, technology was really moving quite, quite nicely. However, the body style is pretty much the same. 1914, on the uh, grounds of Lake Chautauqua, or Chautauqua Institute, this is uh, W.D.'s home, and this is, a, this is taken maybe eight years ago. I want to put it up here. Beautiful home. And this is W.D. at his home uh, with his wife, uh, uh, Catherine, and his son, Warren Packard II. I mentioned later that he was killed at the age of 28 in, a, in an airplane crash. I brought this picture in here, and I want, I, I I enjoy showing this to the students going through the museum. I always thought this man here, Alvin McCauley, he later became the CEO of the Detroit operations, was at least six foot tall and uh, with his Texas hat on there. But no, he's only five six. Mr. Packard is only five foot one. <laughs> we think of the Packards as being big people because they've accomplished so much. And I tell the students, you don't have to be big and beautiful to be successful. You do have to be smart, though. This is a 1916 Packard. It's now we have a twin six. That's a 12-cylinder engine. How technology is really moving along. This is an all-weather car now. And this is probably in Detroit, an upscale uh, community. The war breaks out in 1917. And uh, the uh, Packard uh, was going to support the, the war efforts. 1919, uh, James Ward Packard, uh, not James Ward, W.D. Packard built Packard Place. And this is a home very similar to the home that's in Chautauqua on, on the campus there at Chautauqua. Uh, Mr. Packard was going blind and he wanted a similar floor plan. However, I believe I heard figures that it cost $150,000 to build the one on in Chautauqua. This one cost $75,000. Uh, so there was quite a bit of difference as far as the quality of the home. But, uh, but he did what the familiar uh, space. It later became the community hospital. And uh, that's, this is what it would look like today. 1919. Uh, the war is over. They had a Liberty engine, and that Liberty engine was, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, it was for, made for airplanes during World War I. And after the war was over, they still had quite a few of these engines left, and they did what any red-blooded American boy would do. They put it in the, uh, on a race car, 
took it down to the Daytona Beach and broke the land speed record of 149.9 miles per hour. And I always say that's without safety belts and helmets, you know, the, you know goggles and a pair of gloves, and you're pretty much ready to go. This home here, 1924, 12 years later, this is the winter home, built very similar to, but not nearly as big as uh, the one here in uh, uh, Lakewood. Uh, this is a, a, a beautiful area, wooded area, and, they, and this picture was taken recently, but uh, the home is, it needs a lot of attention. This is uh, Mrs. Gilmore's uh, family picture. This is taken, I believe, on the 20th, 1923 uh, Christmas picture. And uh, it's, it, it's uh, Elizabeth Gilmore, her father, her brother, and her sister. The other woman over here is an aunt or a cousin. And the two kids are, one is the son of uh, Elizabeth's uh, brother. His name was Rowan. <laughs> and the other is uh, a summer. And of course, the gentleman in the center, that's her father, that uh, he was a, a judge uh, in Warren, Ohio. Packard had uh, three different styles of hood ornaments on their cars. And uh, this was the most expensive. It's called the Adonis. And it cost $35 option. Not many people swung for the 35. So those are very rare. Uh, the um, this is what it would look like well, actually on one of the classic cars. This one's called the shovel nose, and that's a um, very collectible car. It took longer to build the grill than it did the rest of the car. So they only made it one year. So if you find one, buy it. Uh, this is the front end of the uh, 1934 Packard. It has the Goddess of Speed. That was probably one of the earlier, more popular uh, the, uh, uh, hood ornaments. Notice here, I do like the shape of the fender, or the, the grill, and the shape of the headlight were all similar in design. This car was very, attention was paid to every aspect of, uh, of that car. It really was a quality car. This is one of the cars, this is the, with that on the hood, that's the same car. Can you imagine what it would look like driving that down the road with a big long hood? Oh, there we are. <laughs> and this is what the dash would look like. Even the radio had that same shape as the, radi uh, as the radiator would have. And then the other third uh, hood ornament was the uh, swan or comorant. And that was taken after the the, the bird that's on top of the fa Packard family press. And that's what that, that significance <coughs> is of, of that. This is the Packard Darren, and of course that has the, uh, uh, the uh, swan on front of it. This is a 1941 Packard. It's not the same as Mrs. Packard's per, uh, limo, but very close. Mrs. Packard's limo was just a little bit longer than this. It was black, same as, as we see here, but was a beautiful, very, very stylish car. And that was the first year that the headlights were in the fenders before they were always between the fenders. Of course, 1942, the war broke out. This is the Packard here in General Eisenhower standing ready to get in the car. Uh, there's more Packard sitting back here. Uh, Packard. Uh, supported the war efforts uh, quite uh, heavily. This is a Rolls-Royce design Merlin engine. Rolls-Royce can't mass produce anything. So they went to Ford and General Motors and Chrysler and also Packard. And only Packard said, yes, we can build those, and, but we make minor changes like American metric, uh, American standard bolts instead of the metric system. And they produced over 50,000 of these for the, um, the P-51 Mustangs, and also they were used in uh, PT boats. Uh, I always tell the kids, this, this big engine, we have one in the museum, and uh, it's a gigantic engine. And this was all built by the ladies, because the men were away at the time. Uh, this is a, a P-51 Mustang, and that was what the engine that changed the uh, the war. Our, now our fighters could escort the bombers all the way to uh, their target. 
before the planes had to go about three fourths away and they had to turn around and come back and let the bombers were on their own. And we were losing about 75% of the bombers that were sent on to finish, up, finish, finish the mission. After the Mustang came along with the engine, its range was longer and uh, they could follow all the way to the, uh, the target. And they lost very few bombers after that. This is a PT boat. There were three of those engines in one PT boat. Uh, I think the whole Navy could water ski behind that. <laughs> in 1948, this is the uh, assembly plant uh, in, in uh, Detroit, making the brand new 1948 uh, Packard. And they had their best year that year, 1948. They sold more Packards than any other, any other year before. 1949, Cadillac came out with a different style. They started having fins, uh, and the Packard this was the second year for the Packard, uh, the new Packard, like the same as the 58, and it now was old school, and uh, Packard was having to play catch up. <coughs> I went back to the drawing board, of course. <coughs> this is an ad, and I showed this mainly because 1927, this is, and the Packard's ad before this, many people collect the Packard ads, but they always kind of focus on their customer as, the, as a, a high society, elegant. So Packard looked at the old ads and in their 1953 ad, they came out and see how they kind of copied that same idea. In fact, they've improved it, uh, and, uh, but it's you're taking, going back, looking at your roots and, uh, and trying to carry on. 1953, Packard came out with the uh, Caribbean and this was really a very, very nice car. Everybody loved it, except Cadillac came out and now they had a wraparound windshield. Wow, that was the latest, greatest. And they had pointed uh, like torpedoes on the bumpers and a little French headlight over that uh, and that fin. Packard wasn't quite there with the, uh, the Cadillac. They were always like one year behind. 1956, Packard had it all together. This is about as uh, pretty a car as Packard uh, could come up with. They, they had the, uh, whoop, let me see, I'm getting my flash here. Uh, the French headlights, the wraparound windows, the kind of the brake and lighted doorways, a hint of a fin, and uh, with the, the bullet in those uh, torpedo bumpers, uh, it really, it had it all. And uh, so, uh, Packard 1957, uh, this was the new model they wanted to produce. They went to the bank, the bank said, well, we're not sure. You lost the military contract now, the war was over, and 40% at one time was Packard's business with military. They merged with Studebaker in um, 53, and Studebaker was having some problems, and Packard had built a new plant, and it wasn't up to full production at that time, and uh, the bank said, we just don't think we can cover you. And one week later, they were out of business. Uh, look at this car closely and you'll see like the porthole there uh, and the back window that would go, the windows would go up and down. 1957, 58 Mercury, Lincolns had that back window. The Ford Thunderbird came out with a little porthole in 57. Uh, the hint of the fins, the headlights would, would pop up. All of these new features appeared on other cars and you can see that these guys didn't sit around waiting uh, to find uh, work. I mean, they just went down the street. They were hired immediately because Packard engineers were respected. There's another example. I pointed out how the men would go up and down. And the, the torpedo type tailpipes. However, the Packard Motor Car Company was gone. Packard Electric in 1960 uh, or 1956 was just coming into its own. And by 1980, it had over 14,000 employees in Warren. And this is uh, one, of the, one of the many plants in Warren uh, that Packard Electric had. Mrs. Uh, Packard would have still benefited by Packard Electric and the cars, even though uh, Warren, Packard had, uh, Warren Packard had passed away in 28, she was still a stockholder and the success of Packard Motor Car and the success of Packard uh, Electric Company certainly would have meant something to her. 
W. D. Packard uh, in 1915. He donated a, a property across from uh, his home on Mahoning Avenue and made Packard Park. Donated. And one of the features of the park was kind of a Japanese tea garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really very nice. 35, they had a uh, Packard uh, swimming pool. And the building there is that's where our uh, Packard Museum is at today. Uh, Packard, W.D. Packard also. Uh, a trust was set up to establish a permanent uh, band and, uh, and uh, also a uh, the uh, Packard Music Hall uh, for them to play their concerts in. Uh, this was uh, really quite a showplace in Warren. Uh, the, the Packard Band in the summertime performs twice a month in the, and in the winters once a month and they are Outstanding, truly amazing. Every time I go, I keep saying, I think they're better. This is the best performance I've ever seen. And uh, I, this was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe. And the, uh, the crowd, he just, I turned around and started just taking some pictures in the back to give you an idea of the size and how, was, how it is appreciated. Andrew Carnegie in uh, 1904 donated a public library to. Uh, Warren, Ohio, and many cities. In 1926, uh, James Ward donated $55,000, uh, which doubled the size, or doubled the uh, contribution that uh, Carnegie made. He literally made the, uh, the library three times as uh, big. In 1915, and we had a discussion last night uh, here uh, about Mr. Packer bought a Ford a uh, fire truck for uh, Lakewood here. And they restored it. I've, just, I, I've taken the pictures here just a, a few years back. And uh, we wanted did Packard, didn't they make a fire truck? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but no one ever said Mr. Packard wasn't a good businessman either. Uh, the, uh, they, uh, he probably said, you got more for your money here. But Mr. Packard passed away uh, in uh, uh, 1928. Uh, this is the Packard and uh, the Packard uh, monument for him and uh, Elizabeth Gilmore Packard. And what is interesting to me is right over here, that's the Gilmore family plot. So really, she's very next to her uh, her parents. This is the Packard. Family plot. It's in the same cemetery, and uh, many of the Packards uh, are, are buried there. Uh, War Warren Packard, the father, his first wife. Now his second wife didn't want to be buried next to his first wife, so she wanted to be buried at the uh, at her family's uh, uh, cemetery, and she was buried next to her mother. Uh, the um, I can't make out all. It's um, roll. Uh, this is the. Uh, the son that was born uh, only lived a year or so. The uh, his first wife, the second son that passed away shortly after, and um, <clears throat> then uh, this is uh, I don't know, pretty good. Uh, oh, that's uh, <coughs> oh, well, Annie. Okay, Annie uh, Stoner Packard, and uh, she's buried there. And here is. Uh, Mr. Packard, W.D. Packard's uh, second wife, and then there, um, this is the Warren Packard the second, and Warren Packard the third, and only one of the uh, Packard sisters, Carlotta, is buried uh, at the Packard plot there in Warren. I will move on here. This is, uh, I went out to the uh, family plot, it's the uh, Hothroth uh, Cemetery just outside of Lordstown. It's about four miles from Warren City Limits. And Mary Packard, the, the mother of uh, the Packard brothers, of course, uh, she's laid here next to her mother. And then Alaska Packard is laid there beside, uh, beside her. James Ward Packard made a uh, uh, $1 million gift uh, to the uh, Lehigh University. And he donated uh, this uh, Lehigh uh, engineering building 
and the very first Packard that's number one. Now, it has been at the Packard Museum, it's, it's, excuse me, in beautiful shape, still runs, and uh, the, uh, it's on display at the uh, Lehigh University in uh, Bethlehem, uh, Pennsylvania. James Ward Packard and Elizabeth Gilmore Packard uh, made some notice, uh, notable uh, gifts. Uh, the, uh, the Cleveland Clinic, $200,000 for medical research. Uh, they purchased the property for the first uh, location and building for the Salvation Army in Warren. They donated a, a carillon for uh, and stained glass windows for the Christ. Episcopal Church in Warren in honor of his mother, donated a, a grandfather clock, a suit of armor, and this is at the, the Warren Library, in 1928. Now, all of these were given before he passed away, but the books, he wouldn't want to part with those for a minute. And it, what they did were not donated to the, music, uh, the public library until after his passing. They donated a uh, $10,000 for chimes for uh, the Methodist Episcopal Church here in uh, Lakewood. Let's see here. After James Ward passed away in 1928, Elizabeth Packard, she lived until 1960. And she, during those period of time, she, in her good judgment, uh, she donated a uh, uh, money for the uh, Little League baseball team, or, or not wasn't Little League at that time, but it was equivalent to what Little League is today, uh, for seven and twelve year olds. And she included, she bought the uh, uniforms and protection and bats and balls and gloves, all the accessories needed to go with that. In 1938, she donated uh, a new wing to the Jamestown uh, Hospital. Uh, 1939. Uh, she made a generous gift to the Jamestown Boy Club, Boys Club. 1940, she set up a scholarship fund to make college possible for many of the young people in Lakewood. And she also served on the Lakewood Board of Education. That meant a lot to me because it wasn't just giving her money, she gave of herself. And that tells me a little bit more about, uh, about the person. 1947. Uh, the, uh, they donated the organ to the Lakewood Church. 1950, donated uh, $10,000 to a, for a new athletic field here in Lakewood for the high school. As you can see, they were very, very generous. Whoop. There we are. In 1948, excuse me, in 1949, at the 50th anniversary, uh, of the Packard Automobile in Warren, there was a plaque put, uh, mounted at that location where the first Packard was uh, assembled. And the president of the Packard Motor Car Company at that time, Hugh J. Perry, uh, came to Warren to uh, present this plaque. And he made a statement, and I ought to read this to you as a quote. Their father assumed a fortune this was large enough, I believe, for the Packard brothers to have lived comfortably without ever making a lamp bulb, an electric cable, or an automobile. Instead, they chose to become capitalists in the best sense of the word. They risked their future, and, their, and they invested their great energy in daring projects. They created opportunities for thousands of people they built factories, schools, and hospitals. They helped change for the better the face and map not only of war in Detroit, but also of America and the world. All honor to the Packard brothers. We shall not soon see their likes again. And I might add, you could say hundreds of thousands of people were benefited by uh, uh, the Packard Brothers. And I think this pretty much sums up what we feel about the Packards and their family. Uh, they really did give a, a, an awful lot to our, our community and uh, 
we have a lot to be thankful for. And it's just been a pleasure being here and uh, presenting this presentation. Are there any questions you might have? I don't know what time, time it is. I think it's we have time. time. Yes. I just want a little postscript. I'm Anthony Brown, a local historian. We had up there in 1950 that she donated the lights to Packard Field. Well, that was after, that was the newer field on Bentley Avenue. That was the oh, okay. Actually, she donated lights in 1940 and the field. Uh, special people. Yes. Yes, uh, Warren uh, is named after Warren Moses, who founded the city in about 1802, I believe. And he, he, there were a lot of Warrens uh, at that point in time. It's like, it seemed like the name Elizabeth keeps popping up <laughs> uh, and during these uh, times uh, when I'm writing uh, this part of the program. Yes, any other thing? Yes? They had chemicals. Oh, okay. Okay, that that, that explains it. <laughs> I always I always laughed when I heard there was a time when George Weiss wanted to buy a car for his uh, his wife, and he was asking around, "What kind of a car should I buy for my wife?" And I said, "I thought the question should be what color. It's going to be a Packard, of course." <laughs> but at that time, even Henry Ford bought a Baker electric car for their, their wives because all you did was hit the button and off you would go. Uh, the, um, my uh, wife's mother uh, tells the story that uh, her father brother owned a Baker electric car and was driving through Warren and as he was walking to work, his brother comes by and hollers out, can I give you a ride? And Harvey hollers back, no thanks, I'm in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> the car was not one that uh, uh, was terribly fast. Soon as the key start came in for the electric uh, cars, or uh, for the gasoline cars, the electric cars, they went out of business almost overnight. Uh, the uh, women preferred the electric cars, and they would, uh, we have one in the museum at this time, uh, showing it, it had beautiful uh, veneer, not veneer, but uh, velour uh, seating, beautiful cushions, and a wicker back seat with a, a fringe top. It was really, they, they knew who their customers were, and they were focusing on their customer. Uh, but yes, when the, when the car, uh, electric cars, uh, uh, or the gas cars, you could turn the key and start it, the electric car was out. And now we're at that point in time when they're looking now at the electric car, uh, as a comeback. You know, what goes around comes around, and uh, I think the museum has something to offer uh, when you look at that. That's why we're, we have some of the electric cars in the museum to kind of give a comparison. Yes? Well, I want to thank you again. I have a, one more thing uh, I brought with me. This is a, a print on oil on campus uh, of the uh, downtown Warren. It's called the First Packard Car Show. And I would like to present this to the um, Lakewood uh, Homeowners uh, Asso Association. And uh, Mary, would you accept? Would you find a nice place? For you?
all feel very, very proud that we live in this place where the Packers grew up and, and, and helped. And, and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful celebration. Thank you. Thank you for that.